This is a particular infographic that's reflective of the way in which the user has been using the phone on a particular time. So this example is showing tweets received, for example. It could just as easily be emails sent received or calls made, that's, that type of thing. But it's, it's our way in which we're introducing a nicely designed infographic as a way of, um, the, the, uh, as a way of showing a welcome screen on the phone. So there's no hard keys or soft keys on here. So what we've, what we're in, what we've, um, what we've implemented is using each of the different edges of the phone in order to allow the user to access all the services available. So by using the, um, um, sorry, let me just start here. So using the, um, the left edge, this, these, these are all the applications that the user wants to access on, 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 most regularly. Um, by going straight into the uh, home screen, we've got access to a full range of services. Um, the home screen is basically giving access to all the relevant service and content that are used on a most regular basis. Um, the people lens is showing um, obviously not only the full range of contacts in the address book, but also the activity of those contacts, particularly in terms of social networking, uh, social networking services. In terms of um, applications, we've got applications that are frequently used, applications that have been installed. But this part of the UI is particularly interesting because it allows our service providers to showcase certain applications that are available for download. So this is different to the way conventional smartphone systems work because that, in those, on those systems, the service provider would have to promote them through the application store. Um, that, that cuts them out of certain monetization elements as well. Um, what we're doing is breaking that control in terms of the way a traditional application store works and giving service partners the opportunity to showcase certain applications um, foremostly within the main part of the UI itself. Um, so if I go into the gallery, so this is our gallery application. Um, I can scroll up and down to go through different content that was available on different dates. And I can go across to right there just to browse whatever content was taken on that day. Um, so by opening the, a particular piece of content, I'm now using the bottom edge swipe to access those services that are relevant to the application I'm now using. So I've got an edit menu, for example. Um, I can also go straight into the sharing menu and do something um, in terms of posting that, that, that photo on the, uh, on, on the um, uh, web service. Um, the other thing I can use is the, um, is the top edge swipe as well. So at the, top, at the top edge I can access a range of services that have relevance in terms of settings. So um, if I wanted to go into um, and change the brightness for example, that would, be, that would allow me to do that without actually leaving the application I was using before. So in other systems I'd have to close that one down, go into system settings and then um, go into the application again. Does it work in uh, portrait or in landscape mode, or it will do? Yeah. Okay, I mean, right, just, right now, yeah. is the prototype you're just well, yeah, right, right, right now, we just we're just using it in portrait. But, uh, and, and the user interface, you know, anybody who's used Ubuntu for desktop will recognize a lot of these things. With the sidebar, looks very similar to the the sidebar navigation, the, exactly, yeah, the yeah. color scheme, uh, even even sort of the search and icon look very similar, but. The apps that we're looking at here are not necessarily apps that you would run on Ubuntu for desktop, um, at least not yet. No, I mean, these applications are designed to use on a mobile interface. Um, but what, what's important about what we're doing is that we've est we're establishing our user interface as being a single uh, code base to run across all our family devices. So um, the same UI runs on the phone, runs on the desktop, runs on the TV, will run on the tablet. So we think that's a very attractive uh, proposition for application developers because when they are developing applications that will have relevance for a phone, they just need to follow the guidelines that will make that will be available in the SDK to make sure that application runs appropriately on the phone, and then we'll make sure that it's uh, it's available to publish. Um, in terms of downloading apps, uh, 
will they have to come through sort of the Ubuntu software uh, center? Software center? Um, is there any equivalent of you know an apt get or some sort of command line? You know, for, the, for people who really like the idea of running Linux on their phone, can they can they sort of get into running Linux on their phone? Yeah, I mean, it's a completely open platform. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's what um, a particular part of the community is interested to do. Then, yeah, I'm sure it's uh, it, it's a very straightforward thing to, to make available. It's not something that you know end users generally would be interested in doing. But so you're targeting it as a mass platform as opposed to something just for geeks. But yes. but basically, if people want to uh, sideload applications, there's nothing preventing them from doing that sort of thing. There's nothing preventing them to do that at all. No. Yeah. And um, and so on this, we're looking at it on a Samsung Galaxy Nexus. This is just sort of an early prototype. You guys are going to be making a beta version of this available for download soon. Yes. Yeah, so we'll uh, we'll open source the code base. Completely in the next few weeks. Um, we just want to make sure we can maximize all the attention that we want to gain with that. So we've got a number of different announcements coming up in the lead up to MWC, and part of part of those announcements will be the release of the open source with an image to allow developers to install this exact same experience on their Galaxy Nexus. And then uh, in the future, when we have more powerful phones and the appropriate docking stations, you'll be able to essentially use this as your desktop computer, yes? Exactly, yeah. That work is already done because we were quite successful with doing that last year by um, running the desktop OS on Android smartphones. Um, this, it's a very straightforward capability to make sure that same feature is available on, 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 on uh, more powerful um, Ubuntu smartphones as well. And um, does it have uh, sort of universal search, sort of like the desktop, and I like, guess a lot of people, you know, a little bit of controversy over the whole Amazon shell. Yeah. Is that sort of thing built into this? Um, it can, yes, it is. It's a capability, it is. I mean... Can it be turned off? Well, yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean. What we want to do is make sure that we've got a very flexible system that allows us to give us um, the best opportunities to work with service partners. And if service partners don't want that as a requirement on on, on their, their on the experience that they're going to be shipping with their hardware, then of course that's not that's something that's uh, um, perfectly acceptable um, to um, to not include.